going on, everybody? It is your boy, Bad Dog, back with another New York Giants video. What is going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a great day. Do me a favor, hit the like button. Helps out the video more. You know it. Just subscribe, ring the bell. As we get closer to the draft, we'll do more draft videos and all that other good stuff. Mock drafts on the way. Mock drafts are always fun, right? They're like the weather. Like, the meteorologists always change their opinion on the weather. Like, hour by hour, they change their opinion. It's kind of like mock drafts. <laughs> Everybody has a mock draft 19.6. I love how many mock drafts that these guys do. And to be quite frank, they barely ever get them right. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. It always is. But the Giants obviously have a, an extremely important draft. And I, I feel like I say this every year. But honestly, this has to be the most important draft we have had in years. We've been a terrible football team for the last five seasons. The worst in football along with the New York Jets record-wise. Anyway, obviously, we've been going through a bunch of coaches, a bunch of uh, coordinators. You know, we've had three GMs now since 2017 and new regime coming in here, new GM, new assistant GM, new head coach, new offensive and defense coordinators, new coaching staff in general. Obviously, 2022 is going to be a big transition year for the New York Giants. And we'll obviously get to see exactly which direction that Joe Shane and company wants to take this team. Now, we have two first-round picks, two top ten picks, of course, number five and number seven. I've seen a lot of different guys being mocked to the New York Giants. I just want to talk about our first pick. And I've done this video a few times now over the course of uh, you know the past couple of years on who you'd rather have. And I'm just going to go with the number five pick overall. And I'm just going to say this. Just assume that these guys that I'm about to mention will not be there at number seven. It's very possible that one of them could be. I doubt it. But... For argument's sake, let's just say these players aren't going to get to number seven. Who would you rather have at number five? Now, Kayvon Thibodeau is a guy from Oregon. The guy's an absolute beast. He was an all-defensive freshman of the year a couple years ago. Last year, he had seven sacks in 10 games. His freshman season, he had nine sacks. He runs a, four, uh, a sub 4 seven forty, and the kid is an absolute beast. There was a lot of talk that this guy was going to go top three, and now there's a lot of mocks having him fall to number five uh, to the New York Giants. Obviously, our defense isn't horrible. It certainly isn't good. We really don't have any playmakers on this defense. We have a few players that I would say are above average. I wouldn't say Leonard Williams is a bad player. Is he worth the contract? Probably not. He probably won't be here next year is my opinion. This is why the Giants only gave these guys three-year deals. He could probably get out from underneath Leonard Williams' contract next year if he has another subpar season. I wouldn't say he had a great season. Again, it's not like Leonard Williams is a bad player, but is he worth the money? Probably not. Dave Gettleman was not going to let Leonard Williams walk after he made a trade for him which really didn't make a lot of sense. So now we're kind of stuck with him. But again, I don't think he's a bad player. I think he's an above average player. James Bradbury, he's probably our best defensive player if you want to think about it. Probably won't be here. He's going to get cut, I would imagine. I think that saves the Giants about $11 million. And Lord knows we are strapped for cash. Our cap situation is terrible. So James Bradbury, probably not going to be here. Blake Martinez, another guy coming off an ACL tear. He's probably not coming back next year. There's another way the New York Giants are going to save money. I think a guy like Aziz Ojolari could be, uh, I think he's a pretty good player. He had a pretty good rookie season with a guy like Wink Martindale. I think Aziz Ojolari could take the next step going forward. David McKinney obviously had a breakout season and a sophomore season being completely healthy. Dory Jackson was not terrible, was not great. Again, we were a bend but don't break kind of defense without a real pass rusher. Kayvon Thibodeau obviously would get Give us that guy that could get pressure on the quarterback on a third down to nine and drop him. We wouldn't have to play so much zone, perhaps, if we had a guy that could actually get to the quarterback, especially in a 3-4 defense where you have a guy where you don't have to blitz all the time to get pressure on the quarterback. It would be nice. Kayvon Thibodeau obviously could be that guy. We're going to assume Aiden Hutchinson is not going to make it to number five. I, I doubt he will. Obviously, if he was there, there'd be a different situation. Thibodeau may not be there either, but if he is... It is certainly somebody that the New York Giants have to take a look at. And to be quite frank with you, I think that'd be a steal if he fell to number five. You know me, I'm always a defensive guy. And Kayvon Thibodeau would certainly uh, help the New York Giants. And again, with an aggressive guy like Wink Martindale, I think he comes right in here. He could fit in here really good. And hopefully we could have some, a, play, a real playmaker on defense. And you never know with these guys coming out of the draft. A couple of years ago, Chase Young came out. Giants fans were all up in arms about, why didn't we tank against Washington? Look at Chase Young! And then Chase Young was absolutely terrible last year. And Andrew Thomas was good. 
and now all those people went away. So it doesn't really mean much coming out of college. You could be great in college and not be great in the NFL, and it doesn't matter which position it is. I mean, we've seen this for years. But Kayvon Thibodeau obviously would be a huge addition to the New York Giants defense, and it would give them what you would, uh, you know, hope would give them a massive playmaker, especially on pass rushing down. So Kayvon Thibodeau would obviously be a really good um, option there. Um, Ecom, uh, Ecom Aquan, easy for me to say. Aquanu, I never, I, I can never say that name. And the Giants like these guys. OCU Menora, you know, Matthias Key, Renuka, Ecom Aquanu. Uh, obviously, he was an All American last season as well. And we all know the New York Giants offensive line is in complete shambles. Outside of Andrew Thomas, there really is no. There's no building block there. We don't know what the hell we have. Will Hernandez probably won't be back here next year. Nate Solder will not be back here uh, in 2022. Obviously, Matt Parrott was god-awful if he couldn't beat out Nate Solder. We don't know when Nick Gates is going to be coming off the leg injury. We have no idea what Lemieux is, never did, and now he's coming off a major injury as well. You want Billy Price at center? We, we don't know what the hell we have at offensive line, and this is something that has plagued the New York Giants for a long, long time, even going back to the days where we had Eli Manning at the end of his career and Jerry Reese and company never even, I mean, they attempted it and they failed miserably with a guy like Eric Flowers. He was absolutely pathetic. Um, but, uh, you know, they really didn't even try to address the offensive line. And you did Dave Gettleman as much as he talked about, I'm going to fix your line, I'm going to fix your line. He didn't fix anything here. He had six first round picks of the Giants and he took one lineman and Andrew Thomas, who actually ended up being pretty good, probably. Dave Gettleman's best first round draft pick, I would assume. I mean, you look at it now, I can't see an argument that he's not the best first round pick that we've had. So obviously, Aquanu would give the Giants something they desperately need, and that would be another building block on the offensive line. I've talked in depth about Daniel Jones and how I think he should be the quarterback in 2022, and I think we need to build that offensive line. If we build an offensive line around Daniel Jones and he's good, it gives the Giants a decision to make, which is what you want. That'd be the best case scenario for the Giants is for Daniel Jones to come out here and ball out behind an offensive line and go, God, what do we want to do? Do we want to keep this kid? Or do we want to go in a different direction? And if Daniel Jones is terrible, then they could say, okay, we're going to go in a different direction at quarterback, and they may do that anyway because do you really want to give Daniel Jones a second contract where he's going to make a lot of money it's, it's really going to be very interesting to see what the New York Giants do and I've meant I made this argument with Daniel Jones and I'm just going to say this real quick to all the people that want to talk about how Daniel Jones doesn't have this and Daniel Jones cut down to the turnovers a day listen I, this is my and, and seriously Giants fans you, you ones that want to stick up for Daniel Jones, and I completely understand wanting to stick up for the quarterback. I get it. But ask yourself and be, be completely honest with yourself about Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones was a quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles and played at the same level on the Philadelphia Eagles as he's played with the New York Giants, would you as a Giants fan and him being a Philadelphia Eagle go, oh, Daniel Jones has a lot of talent. They just don't do anything for him there in Philadelphia. He doesn't have a chance in Philadelphia. They, they have a terrible team. He's going to be really good if they just get some pieces around him. Or would you laugh at the Eagles fans and go, your quarterback sucks. Be honest with yourself. That's what he's shown the first three years. Be honest with yourself. I'm not saying if the Giants don't build a line around Daniel Jones that he can't be good because you know me. I have said Daniel Jones has the physical tools to be a good quarterback in the NFL. It's in here that worries me. Does that have to do with the coaching? Does that have to do with Daniel Jones in general? Does that have to do with the offensive line? I guess we really don't know, but we can find out if we do build an offensive line around Daniel Jones and we have a different coaching staff now, right? Personally, me, this is really tough between Aquanu and Thibodeau. I don't know which direction I would like to go. Both of them obviously would make our, you would hope they would make our team better. Um, but me, if I have to sit here and pick, I am always a defensive guy. You know that. I still have to go Aquanu, man. I need this offensive line of the New York Giants to be the way it used to be. I think it's extremely important that you get yourself in third and manageables. You can run the ball. You can control the time possession. You can wear down the other defense because if your offense can do things like that, it makes your defense even better, man. I grew up in the 80s. The Giants were pretty good on both sides of the ball at that point, more so on defense than offense. But in the 90s, man, when we had guys like Danny Cannell, Dave Brown, and Kent Graham as a quarterback, our teams couldn't move the ball at all on offense. 
defense was able to keep us in the game. And obviously, when Eli Manning got here and the offense was able to catch up with the defense, we won a couple of Super Bowls. And that, this is all I'm talking about. It makes your defense better. So me, if I had to choose, I'm going to Quanu <laughs> at number five. I know that a lot of people will be like, how oh, do you pass on Thibodeau? And I get it. That's why I'm making the video. What do you think in the comment section? Let me know. If there's only one guy here that you could take at number five and he's not making it to number seven, are you going defense with Kayvon Thibodeau? Are you going offensive line with Ecom Aquanu? Let me know what you think in the comment section. As always, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll probably do another one of these for number seven. I always like the ones. I always like these videos. I always like to get your opinion on which direction you would like to go because I always like to get the pulse of the fan base, whether you agree or disagree. It's all good. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Like I said, very important draft. I'm getting extremely impatient. We're still two freaking months away from this thing, but I just want to know where we're going and what we're doing. Thank you for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button if you're around later tonight. I'm going to do a, a random NBA game for the hell of it. We're going to we're going to do the Warriors and uh, and the Blazers, and of course we'll be back for the Lakers tomorrow. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Bad digging dizzle, gone. Peace.